Hello, this is Mikey K from Scratch. Welcome to a Godot programming tutorial on using the brand new visual programming language. And we're going to look at the basics of using visual programming in the Godot 3.0 engine. Now, I do warn you right up front, I am using the alpha release of Godot for recording this. So it might crash a bit or it might change a bit based on when you actually watch this video. But granted, that's pretty much true of any game engine video I ever record. Times they are changing all the time, so nothing really out of the ordinary there. So if you've never heard of it, visual programming is the new or a new programming interface in the Godot engine. Uh, it was available in 2.0 in a trial form, but today we're going to look at it as it stands in the 3.0 release. Now what you'll notice here is I've actually already done a text-based step-by-step version of what we are going to cover here, and we are covering very, very basic stuff here. So pretty much, if you've already figured out how to program with GD script, I'm giving you pretty much the Rosetta Stones of the equivalence or the process using visual programming. There's pretty much a one-to-one -one mapping between GD scripts, you know, methods, operators, functions, etc., and this, the equivalent in visual programming. So if you know the one, you can figure out the other. Now the nice thing, and here's where visual programming really shines, is there's a lot of ability to sort of dig in and experiment. So if you are just kind of trying to figure out how things work, visual programming might be the way to go. At the same time, I do want to make it very clear right up front that this is 100% optional. You do not have to use visual programming, or you can mix and match it in. Now, visual programming is generally aimed at, you know, prototyping or designers. It's a codeless approach, and that's kind of a misnomer because you're still coding. You're just not using text to do it. You're using a visual flow graph to create your programming logic. All right, enough rambling on. Let's jump right in with an example. And here you can see, I just created a new project. We'll open it up. Create that and off we go. Now I will link that uh, the web version of this particular tutorial down in the comments below. All right, so here we go. We're gonna switch into 2D mode and this is gonna be the simplest application you've ever seen. Uh, very boring really. Uh, create a root node. Let's call it root and make it a node. All right, and underneath that, what we're gonna do basically is just create a simple 2D program that um, causes our sprite to go across the screen. Nothing magical here. This is more about showing you the programming interface as opposed to doing anything really funky. So here's your 2D screen. Uh, just drag this guy over and it will automatically create no parent to instance a child. Hey, right here. There we go, come on. All right, so there we go. We created a new sprite uh, parented to our root node called node. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into further explanation of what this is. If you do need more instruction, go to my uh, Godot tutorial series. Even the stuff I've done for 2.x uh, will easily explain what we're doing here. Uh, but now we have this sprite to work with. Let's go ahead and attach a script to it. Uh, process is pretty much the same for 2D or three, um, sorry, uh, visual programming or the various different other options. You just come on in here, right click the node you want to attach the script to and pick attach script. Uh, that will bring you to this dialog right here. And what we want to do is switch from GD script to visual script. And then finally, we have to give it a location. So we will call this, uh, let's go with my script.vs. All right. So this basically is going to create our new script. And there we are in our programming language. So up here you can see uh, our selected script is myscript.vs. And over here is where your um, programming graph is ultimately going to be. Now, uh, if you've worked with GDScript, you already know there are several callback functions that basically provide the links or the hooks where your code hooks in. These are called at various different points in time by the engine, and there's different callbacks for different classes. Now, the class we're dealing with here, you can see the base type is a sprite. So it automatically knows what we attach to. We attach to, um, so see there, our type is sprite. It's basically just the class we instanced. Um, this guy automatically knows, and it also knows that the functions or the callback functions that are available for it. So you see here, there's this little icon right there for functions, and we drop that down, and it's got all of the various different callbacks that are available for a sprite object. Now, if our script was attached to a camera object, it would give you all of the different callbacks available for a camera, etc. So this is dynamic based off of the base type of the class we attached our script to. And here you have your various different callbacks. These are called at different points in the, the game loop or the game life cycle, the ones that are pretty much the most commonly used. Uh, if you got to override the drawing functionality, use draw, but you don't really use it that often, to be honest. You use either process or fixed process. Um, these are basically called every pass through the loop. Uh, I won't get into the, the difference between the two, um, but uh, you basically you would use one or the other. This is pretty much your update function if you're used to other game engines. Uh, so that one is used a whole lot. Now, the other ones that are often used, enter tree is basically when it is added to the scene. Uh, ready is when it is, you know, basically been initialized and is ready to go. Uh, if you need to do something during the creation process, you instead would often use init. So this is basically the constructor for your object. 
And then the other one you would often use is input. And this is basically on handling user input. What we're going to use today is process. So just click process. And you see here, it created a graph in our um, node over here. Actually, that was dyslexia at its best. It created a node over here in our graph. And this is the entry point. So you can see here, we have this white triangle. This is basically the process flow. This is, um, you know, your, your uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, your call stack of sorts. This is the, the way your program executes. This is the entry point of this particular function. So all things start here. And you can see we have another little um, value on the right here, this little ball here. This is the, um, the parameters basically being called with the process function. So when the process function is called, it is passed a floating point value called delta, and it's available here. And we can now use delta in other um, classes, etc. So as part of our code. In this particular case, we're not going to. We're mostly just caring about what happens when process does something. So you see, you can drag a line out and then do various different options. So you can see here, you can create like a switch or a while loop or an if condition, etc. We're not actually going to do that. We're going to do a straight function call in a minute, but we need some data to work on. So that's exactly where we're going to start with. So what we need to do now is get a reference to the sprite that we're attached to. And in the coding world, this is self. Um, if you're not used to the Python programming language, this is a lot like this in C++, Java, or C Sharp. And now we need access to it. Well, you see over here, available nodes. So these are where we can get all the different options for our graphs. And you see there's, you can drill down through there. There's tons of different options. So you can get like math constant, um, sub uh, call, you can do various different things, data, get local variable, see tr um, the scene tree, the scene node, uh, et cetera. You'll see there's actually the guy we're looking for, but you can see there's all these different options we've got here, plus all of the different, say, built-in functions. We can even create our own functions. But what we want in this particular case was self, which I just passed by. So once you've found the node you want, which coincidentally you can also search for this way, uh, just go ahead and create one. So just double click that and you'll see this guy just basically gets um, an instance of the uh, pointer to our object, so of type sprite. So you see here, it knows it's a sprite, and this passes out the value. Now the side that something is oriented on is important. So basically, output is on the right-hand side, input is on the left-hand side. We haven't had any inputs yet, but we will shortly. Uh, so this now has a reference to our actual sprite. What we want to do is now get the uh, position of our sprite. So you'll see here on the output for this sprite reference, just drag out this handle like so, and you'll see we've got the option between call, get, and set. What we want to do is pick get, and you can see all of the different properties available. So here you can see our base class is sprite. We go down, we've also got access to node, which sprite inherits from, and then underneath node 2D, you've also got normal node. So what we want to do is pick uh, position under node. So what we're done here is basically um, we've gotten we called instance get on our input of type instance of our object right here. But really what we've got here is an output of vector two. So in simple English terms, we basically just said, what is our position? And it returned this vector two, which is you know our X and Y coordinate in the 2D world. So now we can go ahead and use this guy. You can see it's color coded. So what this will take on the opposite end is you'll want to have it go to data that handles the vector input type. So now we've got our, um, our position in the world, what we're going to want to do now is multiply that position by an, or um, add a value to that position to move by. And we're going to do this time by creating a variable. So see over here underneath functions, we've also got variables. Let's go ahead and click a plus and we're going to create a new variable. Uh, so start off by, we will call this move by. So just rename it right here and then head on over here to the inspector and you'll see the variable, there's different types here. So you got uh, with, sorry, let me, I don't did that wrong. Sorry. Click it. So once you've named it, right click and do an edit variable like so. And you'll see here, what we can do is set the type of our variable. Our variable is ultimately gonna be a vector too, but you've got all these various different built-in classes that it can be, or your more generic say object class. But what we wanna do is create a vector too. And we're gonna give it a value of, so click that. So as you can see this, this input automatically knows what kind of data a vector two has. And we're gonna set it to one and zero. So basically we're saying we're gonna move by one pixel per update call. And that's it for now. So we've created our new variable. So our variable is now available for use. And then to, to actually use it, just drag it onto the graph like so. All right, so now we have our position. We have the amount we wanna move our position by. The next thing we wanna do is go ahead and actually add the one to the other. So you click here and go add. You'll see we have a math operator for type add. Just drag that onto the scene like so. So you see A plus B, A's input comes in this way. And you'll see it's it's taking any object type and then B's value is coming in this way like so. So we've basically just added A to B or 
B to A technically. Uh, what we can also do with that select is see this any, we can select this any and we can change the operator type to be more specific. So we can say this is a vector two. So now it knows that a vector two is coming out of this. So there is our add now. So what we've done is we basically every frame we say, what is our position? What is our value? And we add it together. So we're basically just added one to our position of our object. And now it's probably not a bad idea to actually do something with it. And we can reuse this self right here. I could go ahead and do a copy and paste, or we could actually just drag another line off, but to keep things nice and consistent, I'm just gonna use another self variable. So we'll bring it in like so, and we're gonna get the position again. So we bring down the cell, okay, let me undo that for a second. And what we wanna do now is set the position. So we're just gonna drag a pin off of here and go to call set. And again, we look down, we find our position like so. Uh, we, this is gonna take the input. So see left-hand side, right-hand side. So right-hand side is output, left-hand side is input. Uh, apparently just eats, well, has a recommendation for where I should eat. All right, back to our code. Uh, so here you can see on the right side, we've got the output of the two values we added together. We just hook that in here, like so. So basically we're saying again to the object attached to this guy, to the sprite, set its position to this value that we created with this logic here. Now the only problem we've got here is there's no actual flow, there's no execution yet. And again, that's where these white pins come in. So see, just drag white pin to white pin and done. So pretty much now, every single time the process function is going to be called, it will call this um, this instance set, which is going to set the position value of our sprite to uh, this added value that we created or calculated. And you, if you're from a code background, you're probably thinking, oh, this is a lot more um, involved than just coding. You, you kind of do the same thing in code, but it's a lot more condensed. And that's 100% true. This is kind of a trade-off with how you like to do your programming. But this is the basics or the gists of how visual programming works in the Godot language. Now let's go ahead, uh, we'll save out our project. I don't think I've actually done anything yet. So let's save our scene as, yeah, node's fine. We'll go ahead and run it. Select is fine. We'll use our newly created node. And there you go. It's going to run and go across the screen. That is visual programming in action. Now, um, you're going to probably struggle a little bit right now if you want to work 100% with visual programming, especially if you don't know GDScript. It's not well documented yet. This is a you know, we're at pre-release status, right? So trying to figure out exactly how things to work are going to work is gonna take a lot of trial and error, but you can see the basics of it. Really, it's it's a fairly straightforward concept. Um, you can move around like so, like you saw, I'm using middle mouse button to pan around. I can use my wheel to pan, which is strange. I can use control plus my wheel to zoom. Oh, no, still pan, shift in, alt in, nope. All right, well, you can also zoom using these guys, zoom out using these guys. Now I would like to see some functionality come in here that isn't currently available. Uh, I don't believe there's the ability to do a comment as of yet. Oh yeah, there is a comment. All right, never mind. I'll take that one back. But what there is availability of the in from, for example, Unreal Engine script is so I can basically take a block of code and like this guy right here. And this is basically saying adding to here. Well, I could turn this into a function, but what I would like to be able to do is just grab this code here and say collapse into one node. Um, and then you can you know, expand it out and vice versa. And that's not really here yet. Uh, but for the most part, it just works. It's, it's a straightforward process. It's one of those things that actually kind of encourages you to go in um, you know, and muck around because you can see basically all of your programming constructs or abilities are available here. Um, you're still gonna need to learn the underlying logic. So you need to know about the callbacks and how to get a hold of things. So you're gonna run into problems like, well, how do I get the screen? This is the exact same, you know, so if you wanna get screen dimensions, you're gonna have to figure it out just as if you're working in GDScript or any other language. You are still programming here. You're just programming uh, visually by creating these flow charts or flow graphs. And that's about all we're gonna cover for today. Now, if you wanna get into a slightly more detailed version of it, I do recommend you download the um, the demos that are available. Uh, so let me just save this scene out and I will show you. Uh, let's go to the project list. If you download the um, the examples from GitHub for the Godot game engine, you will find this guy, Visual Pong. Uh, it's probably the most, actually it's, it's about the only uh, visual script example out there. Uh, but we go over here to the script section. You see there's your logic for your ball and there's your logic for your paddle. And you can see the methods it's implemented over here. So uh, the paddle implements uh, process, ready, and reset. And you can see kind of an example of, and then we go over here to the ball, and you can see the ball implements 
Oh, paddle, I'll go back to paddle. So paddle, you can see here, implements on area enter. So this is the function that's gonna be called if there is a collision. You can see a bit more of a um, example of visual programming in action through this example. Nothing really major here, but it is a simple Pong example. So if you wanna deep dive a little bit more into what visual programming can do, that option is there. Now, if you wanna learn this way, again, the documentation isn't up to snuff yet. So this probably isn't a way I recommend you work with until the documentation gets there. Uh, but if you do want a trial and error, this basically does have one-to-one -one functionality that GD Script does. So I do recommend you check that out. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do, of course, click like. Uh, we cover all kinds of game development stuff here, so please do click subscribe. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.